Miners, Money King here. Today, we're going to be learning some tips and tricks about HiveOS. So, let's get right into it. As a crypto miner, you know you want your equipment to be high quality. Proper cable management is part of your mining rig, and the Veteran Miner has you covered. The Veteran Miner cables are created with the best materials to ensure they are of the highest quality. Our cables are made of 16 gauge tin copper, ensuring another layer of protection from oxidation and corrosion. We support our products with a 100% guarantee. Visit our website at www.theveteranminer.com and get the best cables for your mining setup. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys a couple of, uh, you know, tips and tricks that I've learned over the years with HiveOS. Maybe you guys do know, maybe you don't know them. You know, you guys would have said to watch and find out. Maybe for some of you advanced guys, this may not be the video for you. But, you know, for some of you, you know, intermediate to new, you know, um, users, this is going to be a good video for you guys. So let's go ahead. Let's dive right into it. So now that we're we're in my little Hive OS farm here, this is over at my other mining location. And you can see I got a bunch of offline workers. I don't even own any of these rigs anymore. I've sold them all. But I still have my one worker here, which is my little 6600 rig that I'm loading Panda. So um, I want to show you guys how to set schedules. And this this may be useful for some of you guys like i know max voltage is on a varying power rate i know that i had one and i used to use it so when you're on a varying power rate there could be times where the demand is too high and your cost of electric is too much and if if you know at every time of the day that at this particular point like between like three and five or like three and seven you have you know a a rate increase and you want to avoid that you know increase you could set a schedule and this way what it'll do is is it will automatically send a command to be able to reboot reboot your rig in you know in in such amount of time and i've already set a schedule like this before um so what i'll do is, is i'll as i'll show you this here um so you guys can see this so what we need to do, we have to do first is you're going to have to set some tags. All right. You're going to have to set tags on the rigs. And how, and how do we set tags? So we're going to come over here to our, our settings. You're going to come over to settings. And down here in this tag section, you can make a tag. You can name it whatever you want. Right. You can name it AMD, NVIDIA, you know, give it a particular color. So say, you know, here. And you can change the color here like this. And then you can change your values to be this, you know what I mean? Whatever you want to do, right? So you can set your tags, okay? And once you have your tags set, all right, then you're going to come back over here to scheduling. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to click on, you're, you're going to click add an event, and then you're going to tell it what tags you want to be able to use. And you can either, you could set very specific tags for very specific rigs. Um, like maybe you have 6700s and you want those to be affected or you want to use your uh, all, all of your NVIDIA cards. Or maybe you want your whole farm, but your whole farm is NVIDIA. You could just do that as well. And then you're going to say, okay, I want tags right here to be able to just... I want all of these affected units, whatever you deem that you want to be affected by the tag, right? It's going to do this, okay? And you could also, you could tell other things what to do with scheduling. You could have it, you know, change flight sheets. You could have it do do different overclocking templates at certain times. This may, maybe during the, the night your power is cheap, so you want to mine kapow. Or maybe, and then during the day you want to mine something more uh, efficient, right? That uses less power. You could do that here with scheduling, right? Um and then you could also do uh, a run a command at a certain point, like maybe this is the time when you want to update your miners or you want to set a reboot uh, every day at midnight or whatever you want to do. These are the commands that you're going to want to be able to do. OK, but what you're going to want to do is is you're going to come down to. So I'm going to give you an example of mine. And if this is something that you want to do, you can kind of take this and, you know, mold it to what you guys want it to. I had AMD and NVIDIA cards both in my farm. So right now I'm kind of targeting the whole farm to always do this. Right. And 
at this time, and you can see the schedule is, I did turn it on to, to make it active, is that it's going to send an execution, which, which essentially means that it's going to send a command to the rig, right? Now, the command I'm sending is very specific because I'm telling it to shut down and reboot in a certain amount of time. So the same thing that we use to, to shut down and boot in 30 seconds, we can do here as well, where we can tell it how many seconds we want it to be. You can make it, you can make it 18 billion seconds, but everything is in seconds, right? So this is, um, you know, 18,000 seconds. Hey Siri, what is 18,000 seconds in hours? It's five hours. It's five hours, okay? <laughs> And which is what I, which I remember having that time set, right? So this is a five-hour wake on land where it will turn off at a very particular time. And you could, you could tell this too. So you could tell it what time zone it's running in. I'm telling it that it's running in the Phoenix time because obviously I live in this area, right? So this way you could say every one day at this time, which you need to use military time, I'm using three o'clock. I want this to go off every day, once a day, right? This way, at three o'clock, the rig shut down, and at eight o'clock, they turn back on, right? And this way, I avoided the varying power rate that I had because there was an on-demand um, peak charge at between three and seven, right? So this way, I was able to, to avoid that. So you could really use scheduling to... Um, if you have p different power rates during the day, you could really use the scheduling to your advantage, right? In this way, like I said, if you have cheaper power at night, you can have it mine something more core intensive, or maybe you have two different overclocks. You have an overclock during the day that's light, that keeps the power down low, and at night when your power is cheaper, you have it change the overclocks uh, uh, on the templates to make them more aggressive and this way you're able to use more power but it's cheaper right there's tons of things you can do with this scheduling so it's really kind of cool and neat to see what you really can do with this feature it's really cool okay so i'm going to teach you another trick here and this is this is you know with the octa miner fans and features not a lot of people know this trick i learned this trick from matt electron quite a few years ago um, so it's really, really cool. And you can make the Octominer fans work a very, a very particular way, right? So, um, what we're going to do here is, is, um, we're going to set the, and this is, and this is what we're doing is, is we're setting the Octominer fans and the GPU fans to work together all as a single unit. Right, because usually when people tune their Octominer fans, they usually tell the Octominer fans to do something, they tell the GPUs fans to do something, but with that fan controller that's there on the board, you could actually, it's possible to have it, to have the GPU fans and the Octominer fans work together in sync to where they'll, they'll go up and down together as needed, but it has to be configured a very particular way. <laughs> And most people don't configure it this way, which is completely respectable. Um, but this is, to me, how I typically set up the Octominer fans. Um, and and I, 9 out of 10, I don't have issues with this. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So what we're going to do here is, is we're going to set the fans to zero because we want them to be in auto mode, right? So for the fans to work in this auto fan configuration right here, we want them to be on auto. And I don't like the reboot on airs in smart mode. I feel like it gets kind of tripped up. And these are the default values in the OctoMiner. So you could go ahead and adjust these. This is where you would adjust your temperatures in this fan controller here. You would adjust your core and memory temperatures here and your minimum fan speeds here. So we're gonna, so we're gonna save this. And then in the Octominer symbol, we're going to keep it blank, okay? We're gonna keep it with nothing, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is to make sure that the Octominer fans are very temperamental and they depend a lot, of, a lot of their information from their environmental sensors that they're connected to the board. So what I like to do every once in a while is, is I'll recalibrate the fans, right? You just click that one time 
and then it will it'll send a command to recalibrate the octaminer fans so they'll spin back up and then ramp back down and it kind of i feel like if they're kind of like stuck and they're not going up or down the recalibration typically helps um and if you ever change a fan controller you will need to do a recalibration to get it to work correctly again so you can see that the fans have ramped up right and then and if you give them a few moments they'll 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 hum back down so now we're, we're we're roughly like at like in the 60 percent we're gonna let them just they're probably see they're gonna go down lower and then they're gonna adjust the fan curve is gonna adjust based right on 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 this factor here so you never change your temperatures here in the octo minor fan symbols you only change it here in the auto fan symbol okay if you set any values here in the octo minor section it it'll make everything not work here and they won't work in sync together right it'll it'll make it all screwy so you need to have it blank here you need to make sure that your fans are zeroed here and now the fans will be able to actively tune themselves as as they needed right so both of these fans percentages here and these fan percentages down here will tune themselves accordingly right you know whether they need to go up or down they will they will try to keep the temperatures um within that temperature range now if you do have one car that is overheating that will throw things in a mix so you may have to adjust your minimum fan speed and bring it up more if you do have a car that's maybe in need of repasting uh, because if it's just one card, I've seen it to where that the rig doesn't really bring up the Octo Miner fans. Um, so that is something to be aware of if you do have a card that does overheat, that could cause some issues. Um, all right, we're going to get a little bit into network security now. And we're in our settings section here, and we're all the way at the very bottom. And by default, this other tab right here, this SSH access is turned on. I turn it off. Okay. And then I, and then when you do that, the web shell turns off by default, but then you could turn the web shell back on like I have. And what that means is, is that means is that you cannot directly SSH to the rig. You can only access the rig via the web shell. And I do this because if you have multi rigs, right on a single you know network or whatever you turn off ssh access which means that they can't they can't tunnel into each other right another even better way to do it is to turn this off and then you can also add ssh keys and if you haven't watched my video yet, I will put a link in the you know up top, and you guys can check that out. Is how to make SSH keys, and when you make the SSH keys, it makes it very secure. And what I mean by that is, is so when you create an SSH key, there's a public and a private key, right? You never share the private, and then you put your public key in here. And think of the public key and private key as like username and password where the public key is the username and the private key is the password what happens is 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 if you have the private key on your computer and then you go to ssh into the rig if you're doing direct ssh access it'll let you in it'll be like oh well hey you got the public and private key match no problem here you go here's your access if somebody else tries to get in and they don't have those keys they won't be able to get in at all the only part they have to worry about that is though is is your computer being compromised so you would have to limit the access that the computer that holds the keys you know what its exposure is to the outside world so just another way to be able uh you know what i mean to kind of secure your rigs a little bit more but if you don't want to use keys like I said, these two are turned on by default, and then I turn this off, and then this one turns off by default, and then I turn it back on. And this way, you could still shell into the rig, but you won't be able to have SSH access to it 
which will help keep us a little more secure. Um, I just want to show a little bit of like another, it's like a little half layer you could put on the rig. It's not really a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. Um, Cause I know there's some non-networking people out there. So that way you guys could maybe add just like a little half quarter layer to your setup. All right, that's gonna conclude today's video. That's just some helpful tips and tricks that I'm showing you guys. Um, I just wanted to put a couple of tips out there, maybe some useful things you guys maybe found them useful, maybe you didn't. Um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Um, what kind of content would you guys like to see next? Um, I did do a stream on Sunday repairing, well, maybe not repairing, but kind of rebuilding a Z15 ASIC. So not sure how you, how you guys feel about that kind of content. Um, but yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. All right, this is the Mighty King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.